Taking another step. Jimmy Johnson took you, a big step man, this past week. You are amazing. There you. you know, last week I had a long and emotional talk with Jerry Jones. And Sunday we're going to talk Jimmy and Jerry. Today we're talking the state of the Cowboys. Jimmy Johnson's taking his team from the absolute worst to the absolute best. In a while. <laughs> hey, did you did you, did you take your blindfold off? You can find that place blindfolded. Oh, hey, well, how you doing? Well, I'm hanging in there. Well, I'll tell you what, I heard you coming down the hall, that laugh coming down the hall, and my ears pricked up, my adrenaline started going, and uh, hey, good to have you here. Well, it's good to be here. It's good, good to be back. Good. Brings and back you didn't have any trouble finding me. Oh, no, brings back great memories. Me too. Jerry, you got to be honest with me now. Did you just put that picture up before this piece here? Or has that one been up there for a while? <laughs> it's been in the building. It's been, it's, it's been in one of those cardboard boxes. <laughs> I've missed you. You've missed me. <laughs> How about this, Cowboy? Yeah! You said, Jimmy, we'll go back to back. And it'll be the greatest sports story in all of history. I'll never forget one time. Uh, Jimmy and we were sitting, we were talking, and you said, "Let me tell you why we're going to win." You said, "We're going to win because we're the Dallas Cowboys. People expect them to. Mm -hmm. We expect them to. Mm -hmm. We know nobody's going to ever think anything of us if we don't win. Right. But we're going to win because we're the Dallas Cowboys." I remember when you said that. Yeah. Well, what's it going to take for the Cowboys to get back winning and get back to the playoffs? Well, I think that this past year, uh, I thought that we. By the way, I'm very disappointed over what we're doing this year. This surprises me. Uh, the toughest year that I've had since being involved with the Dallas Cowboys. The most mm -hmm. disappointing year. Mm -hmm. I thought we had put together a team that could play defense, have a lot of confidence in what we do on special teams, and thought we could ride it through mm -hmm. with that young quarterback, or quarterbacks as it right. turns out. The rest of this season, is this kind of a evaluating process for this coaching staff uh, as far as your decisions after the year as far as them coming back next year? I think uh, that logic tells you that uh, uh, you've, you've, you've got to look at what the future has in store for us. Uh, we've just made a significant change on the offensive side of the ball just for this year. Uh, it's, it's, I'm not in the mood, really, to be making, uh, making another change because we've got to ask ourselves, well, did the young quarterbacks, uh, did some of the things with excuses they are, did they influence how we've been able to be offensively? To be fair to us and our fans and everybody concerned, we need to see uh, something happen positively. What do you sense right now Emmett Smith's role will be with the Dallas Cowboys in the future? What's his future? Well, we both know that he's NFL royalty and uh, have shared some of our happiest moments mm -hmm. with Emmett. But uh, the bottom line is that uh, uh, we've got to move on. And as much as we appreciate everything that Emmett has been, as a team and for the future, we've got to start doing some things that set us up for the future. Jerry, you've received a tremendous amount of criticism, and, and, and I will say this, uh, you know, more criticism than you should have received. You know, there's no way in the world people should have been criticizing you for some of the things that happened. It wasn't your fault. Having said that, would you ever consider hiring a general manager? Jimmy, uh, uh, that wasn't the way that I, I, I came into the National Football League. Mm -hmm. uh, I really feel like that uh, uh, having uh, been through what we went through, the success that we've had, mm -hmm. Uh, that motivates me to show them. Right. I, I don't. I don't have to worry about being fired next week or right. next month. <laughs> that is a nice thing yeah. about being the owner now. People will say, well, "Why does he go down the sideline?" You want to be right there and supportive, but you catch a lot of criticism for going on the sideline. I had a good friend uh, and someone that I really uh, not only respected probably more than anybody in the uh, a game of football, his name was Jimmy Johnson, tell me when we were sitting there talking about coming down here and owning the, side, owning the team and being involved together. Mm -hmm. And he said, 
you've got to come to the sideline. Mm -hmm. He said, you've got to come yeah. to the sideline. He said, yeah. I want you to be down there and deal with it. Now, I don't think that you meant be down there every game <laughs> calling the play. <laughs> but I you it. did both me on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Folks, you're in for a real treat because that was just uh, part one of a two-part series. Uh, Jimmy and Jerry's Peace will continue this Sunday when we find out why it all went wrong with their relationship. And Jimmy, boy, Jerry said an awful lot in that piece. And the most disappointing year since he's been associated with the team? I tell you, you know, JB, we started off football, as you just saw on the piece, but it got extremely candid after that. And we both got a lot of things off our chest and things that had never been said before. Uh, got in, you know, a little bit emotional there at times. Well, you know, one of the things that you guys addressed in that interview was the personnel decisions, bringing in a possibly bring in a general manager. And one of the things that Jimmy did so well was personnel through the draft, through free agency, making that one addition that might push you over the top. And I think up until this past offseason, this is really the first offseason when this organization, this Dallas Cowboy organization, since you've left, have done a good job in the draft. And there are a lot of questions that remain to be answered, in particular on offense. Quarterback, wide receiver, running back, does the offensive line fit the scheme that they have? A lot of questions. Well, I think in the interview that you heard, uh, he said this offense for one year would be evaluated. They were brought in for one year, so that tells me Bruce Costler and his offensive game plans may not be there next year. Second thing, you all, all but were guaranteed Emmett Smith will not be back next year. And the There's third thing I picked up on it was the fact that Jerry Jones uh, and his stubbornness to not bring in a general manager because pride goeth before the fall, and the fall is happening right now and he'll have to address that, or the Cowboys will continue to make the same moves, fix right. one hole, patch a hole, get another league somewhere These else. next five games are critical for Hutchinson, for Hambrick, for the offense, offensive line. I think the defense is set, but there's a lot of questions about the rest of the I team. Think, I and think, and Campo. And Campo, the coaching staff. I think it's great that these two sat down. Oh, Absolutely great. It was good. part yeah, two was coming up on Sunday. But Jimmy, today is the juicy stuff. Well, you know, Jerry and I went to college together back many years ago at the University of Arkansas, and so I had a great relationship, and people have always asked, well, you got that kind of relationship, you win back-to-back -back Super Bowls, why couldn't you stay together? Today we find out. Frank Brawls told me one time that uh, uh, while I played there at school, he had two genius IQs on the team. And he said, Jones, you're not one of them. <laughs> but one of them, I thought, was Jimmy. Mm -hmm. And so uh, your intellect, uh, the, your ability to focus and solve problems uh, were a source of comfort for me. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, when I made the commitment I made, which uh, was a reach to get to be a part of the future of the NFL, it was a hell of a feeling to know that we were back to back. Everybody said they couldn't do it. Well, guess what? Dallas, your Cowboys are still champions. Everything was going good. In your opinion, how did it go different? You know, why did we split, in your opinion? From my perspective, mm -hmm. when we had success, then I started not being as tolerant of things that wouldn't have even crossed my mind in our years when we were really trying to get this thing going. Right. I let uh, uh, media, I let some of the things I, we kept talking about, we talked when we first got involved, yeah. we weren't going to let this media, now remember this media's going right, they were going right. to right. but I let some of those things uh, possibly uh, get you in a bad mood from time to time, right. get me in and a bad mood, right. bad mood from time to time. Yeah. And candidly, Jimmy, I detected from you a uh, uh, this is not for long feeling. You know, if it hadn't have been that year, it would have been the next year or the year after. I was going to move. I, I had made up my mind I wanted to move to, back to South Florida. At the NFL owners meeting in Orlando, it was widely reported that I didn't raise my glass when Jerry visited my table. The reported snub is what many people believe set off the chain of events leading to my departure from the Cowboys. But I, I will say this. I did toast to you in, in Orlando. I, I did. You may, you know, you may not remember it that way because there were some people at the table that no longer worked for the Cowboys that they did not toast. I, you know, I, I didn't think anything about it. You, know, you said, you know, toast, and you know, a couple of people went like they weren't going to toast because they didn't work here anymore. They didn't have Super Bowl rings. You know? But I went, you know, I wasn't paying attention, and I did toast. 
I believe you, and candidly, I think that we both should recognize that you knew that I really didn't think 500 coaches could coach this football team. We'd known, we, we, that I really didn't believe that. Of all the things, over, you and I have known each other for, let's see, how many years now? Uh, 65, so uh, that's uh, going on 40 yeah. years. Yeah, getting close to 40 years, of all the things. That hurt me more than anything, uh, because I did know how you felt about me, yeah. and I, I, you know, I recognized that you knew my contribution. You know, maybe a 500 could. If they were good enough football team. 500 coaches could, could coach them in a Super Bowl. Yeah, but but we both knew it, we didn't believe that. If, yeah, that one thing. I, I think that's what put me over the edge to end up doing what I wanted to eventually do anyway. Yeah, I'll never forget. You were sitting in that chair, right? Right. And I'm sitting in this particular chair. Mm -hmm. And we had met the day before. Mm -hmm. And we said, let's go home and sleep on this. Right. Yeah. And uh, we, we were talking about, let's, let's do it for one more year. Yeah. And we talked about possibly doing it for one more year. Exactly. We come in the next morning. And I think one of the writers around here had written in one of the papers, Jones says, my way or the highway. Well, I remember it like it was yesterday. And, and I picked up that paper, and, and I was still, when I walked out of the house, Rhonda says, what are you going to do? And I said, Rhonda, I don't know. And all I said, I said, I don't know. And I came in, I picked up the paper and says, and I said, oh, no, it's the same old crap again. And that's when I came in here, and you and I both looked at each other, and then we both realized that it, it's not going to work. Yeah, it, it uh, uh, as I recall, without your famous selective memory, as I recall, <laughs> um, uh, well, you said, what kind of working relationship did we have? Everybody said, well, you were a meddling owner. There was no meddling. Yeah. And, uh, and, and really, I think it, it was a situation where both of us realized that we'd had a great run together. But it, we also both knew that it was time that we went our different directions. And, and, and I understood that. You know, the downfall of every successful organization or company or relationship uh, usually is internal. And JB, you know, in our situation, just like the downfall of big companies, it's everybody wants a bigger share as you had success, bigger share of the accolades or the money or the raises or the credit. And I think that's what led to the split. The interview certainly had the feel of it, Jimmy, but was it as cathartic as it appeared? Was it cleansing, a release? Yeah, it, it was good. And, and Jerry, he understood. He knew that I was eventually going to move back down to South Florida. I was going to do it. You know, but it just happened a little bit faster Probably than what... Probably going to do it at the end of that year, but I, yeah. those events that occurred at the owners' meeting and the newspaper kind of accelerated the process. Yeah, it just hurried it up. And everybody, everybody always, you know, got on to Jerry saying he ran Jimmy off. It, it, he didn't run Jimmy off. I mean, I was going to leave and go back to you South talk Florida. About he knew that. In the third person? Well, you know how that goes. I, I, I hear these players doing it all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know the thing. Wow. I, the thing that I respect, and I respect both you, and I certainly respect Jerry Jones. Always have, is the fact that people don't understand. It's not sometimes you you can't have enough success. You can win enough Super Bowls, and you can make enough money to a point to where those things no longer matter to you. People in our business of the television, we're gone from our family. There's a point in time where you want to go home. Right. You wanted to go home, yeah. and you went home, and you were happy about it. It's the rest of us that can understand that. I understand it. Yeah. Well, part of the problem was, at that time, all your buddies, essentially, were gone. You know, David left, Tony left, Norbert left, you know, and, and not that I didn't still have buddies on the staff, but it wasn't quite as much Is as Is that fun. why you're back here now? Because <coughs> you missed my buddies. buddies. <laughs> I'm with my buddies. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We love you, man. Oh, my. You're the man. <laughs> I want you know that Texas 